Learn to make a ribbon mug cozy by Leisure Arts in the Knitting for a Cure book. Thank you so much, Leisure Arts. We're going to learn how to read the pattern and knit up the specialty stitches today on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Today's pattern is brought to you by Leisure Arts. Thank you so much to Leisure Arts. We're working directly from the book of Knitting for a Cure. You can get your book down in the link in the description below. And I'm going to be working through this, but you'll want to get your own pattern to be able to uh, have that in front of you. I will go over each of the rows. We're going to learn how to read the pattern from this book and work some of these specialty stitches. The Knitting for a Cure book by Leisure Arts has 18 patterns from matters and you can work them um, for of course breast cancer and pinks but you could work them in any color as well but this book is really great it's got 18 designs here's some on the back right here and then let's show you a few here so those are some of the patterns that you will find in the book. Be sure and get it. I am only allowed to teach one pattern from here. So thank you so much to Leisure Arts. And let's begin. We're on page 78 of the book. All right, so when we're learning how to read a pattern, we first want to dive in and read the entire pattern first. So we're gonna go over some of the basics of this pattern so I can show you how I start off reading a pattern to get to know it. Of course, you've got your title, you've got a little bit of description of what uh, the pattern is about. Your finished measurements are here. This one's three inches by nine inches and then you've got the centimeters listed. Uh, for the materials, you're going to need a medium weight yarn, a number four, and I am using today Vanish Choice in color raspberry. And, the, and of course, you won't need a whole ball. You can get a few of those out of a ball. You'll need straight knitting needles size seven, uh, which is four and a half millimeter or the size needed for gauge. I'm just using these um, little double pointed needles. It actually works really well. You'll also need a cable needle and a yarn needle. And I also recommend getting a row counter or you'll need something to note which row you're on, maybe just a, a post-it note, a sticky note or something to cover up um, where you have not worked yet. Um, or you can click off on the row counter when you've finished a row. It notes the gauge and if you've never knitted from a pattern before, uh, it is saying gauge is in stock and knit stitch, which is all knits on one side and then on the reverse is all purls and then you measure it out and in four inches when you measure you get 20 stitches across and 26 rows up and down. Now for this particular one it's not that important on gauge. Uh, I would just stick with the same size needle and yarn that's recommended and then you want to follow the directions in here because there's actually a very easy way to learn how to measure this. You will need a tape measure of course and then you'll want your mug, the general one you want to use. I'll give you some directions for what worked for me to get the right size. So the techniques used um, are a listing of what they use in here that are specialty stitches that they've already uh, written out on some diagrams. So in here they're using an M1 and a K3 tog or knit three together. And it's uh, saying that you want to look at figures 5A and B on page 90 for this one and then it's got a referencing another page for this other one. So in this book you would jump over whenever you come to that section, uh, whenever you find this particular um, abbreviation, you would, um, you'd find the M1, which is, mm, it's over here somewhere, and then you would jump over to page 90, and then you can read that, and that says go to 5A, and so you would go over and read this part and this part and get familiar with it, and I usually try and, if I don't know the technique, I try and actually, like, look it over right now and see if I'm comfortable with it, see if I want to practice it on a swatch, and um, and then go from there. And then your knit three together is going to be here. And then it's got the knit three together and it talks about how to make one of those. And then you have this stitch guide, which is different. This one has three different stitches. These are techniques and they are uh, moving the stitches around. So we've got a cross right. And then you would go through and read all this abbreviated CR. And it's used, uh, it uses two stitches. So this is worked over two stitches and it describes how it's done. And then the twist left 
is abbreviated TL and uses two stitches. The twist right abbreviated TR and uses two stitches. And so we will go over these in the video. So I don't want to go over it terribly now. But whenever you read it by yourself, go sure and go through and read these and kind of mull it over and say, okay, do I think I kind of know what this is doing sort of in my head first before I move on? Um, I think that's a great way to get um, accustomed to what the pattern is going to do before you jump ahead. All right, so the cozy uh, starts here and it says the cast on stitches and then it's gonna go row by row by row of what you will do. And you'll notice here on the first row, it starts saying that we're going to uh, K2, which is of course knit two, and then P2 is purl two, knit 11, and then purl two and knit two. When we get to row two, it notes that that's the right side. So when we are casting on, that starts off on the right side and then when you turn it over you're actually on the wrong side to do row one so when you hit to row two you'll know that's the right side and that's where you could mark it with a stitch marker if you'd like to know which is the right side after a while you'll be able to tell because it'll start having this pattern work up all right so you just continue on going moving down reading 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 all the rows when you find something that you don't know you can see, let's go on down here and go, oh, well, here's this uh, CR here. That's where you would come over here, find the CR, and then read this and, and do this stitch work here. And of course, we will go through that. Um, down here, where it says row 16, it actually spells out a little bit more of what you're doing. So you would, would familiarize yourself with that. All right, we're gonna go on down here. And if you notice, it's giving you all the rows that you're going to need. Then down on row 28, it um, finishes out that line and then tells you to repeat rows one through four. Now what's really cool about this pattern is it actually uh, gives you a little bit set of another set of instructions uh, instead of just simply measuring it just says the cozy needs to be smaller than the mug that fits around so it fits around snugly and doesn't fall off so you measure around your mug and then you measure the length of your cozy that you've already got to this point and then um, you multiply it by two so say I knit this length and I got um, four, um, let's see, what is this anyway? This is nine inches. Um, yeah, so if I um, knit and I got four and my mug is um, eight or eight and a half inches, then I would just double that, um, that amount. So I would just um, fo follow the directions. Uh, if, so I multiply by two. If it needs to be a little bit longer, then you repeat rows one through four once more. Uh, if not, then continue re with remaining rows. And I will tell you, it only just says once more. So if you have like a really big mug, you can totally make it. If you even have like a big soup bowl or something, you want to put it around, you can totally do it. You would just continue repeating those until you got to um, uh, the length that you want. And then you would make another one of those repeats, which contains this pattern here. So I think it's cool to go ahead and measure up to um, where it stops you and then put a stitch marker in and count um, and so that you know how long that was and then when you add those extra rows you know how much height it gives you. So anyway let's move on and then it tells you to repeat a certain number of rows and that's what gives you that repeated uh, pattern here. Okay and then it says bind off all stitches in pattern leaving a long end for sewing. So here is what it looks like when you get to that point. So this is it here. So I've worked those rows and then I actually didn't need to work those extra rows. And so um, I started on the next part and went all the way up to here. And then um, I bind off all stitches in pattern and leave a long tail for sewing in the end. So we will sew that in together. So that is the entire pattern. So let's jump in and begin. All right, so we're gonna begin with row one, and I like to put a sticky note, and it covers up the rest of the pattern, and you do not move this until you're complete with this row. You can also use a stitch marker placed on the right side of the work so you know which side that you're on. I am going to refer to this pattern off to the side, and we'll put some directions on the screen, uh, but I don't wanna have it on the screen because I actually am going to have a right-handed and left-handed video for you. So be sure and check the uh, opposite-handed video out if you need that and you're watching the wrong one. All right, so let's begin. We're going to cast on 19 
stitches. Watch the video from beginning to end, seeing all the steps necessary, and then go back and actually um, work it with me, being sure to pause, use the controls to slow down, and all that kind of stuff. All right, all right, so we're gonna start with a long tail, and this is about 16 inches or 40 centimeters, and then we put a slip knot, and this is how I make mine. I wrap it around my finger twice, put the back loop over the front, and then put the back loop over the tip of my finger and it makes a slip knot. And now I'm going to slide it onto my needle and pull it to where the tail is toward me and the ball is at the back. I'm going to grab it with my hand and then we're going to split that yarn open with our finger and thumb. And now we're going to pull it back like a slingshot. We're going to scoop up where the thumb is, go down where the finger is, and then down where the thumb is again. And then we take it off from our thumb and then pull on that yarn, okay? You can also put your finger on the stitch that you just created while you're making the next one and it keeps it nice and stable. So let's do that again. Go up through the thumb, down where the finger is, down to the thumb, and let it go. Up through the thumb, down to the finger, down, the thumb and let it go. All right, continue until you have 19 stitches. Pause your video as you need. And now we want to turn our work and begin with our first row. And this will be the wrong side of your work. The first row we are going to knit two and purl two first. So we're going to knit that's sticking it in that first leg of the stitch. Yarn over, pull through, let the old fall off. Put the yarn forward to purl, go into the front leg of that stitch, yarn over, push that yarn through, let the old one fall off. We'll do that again. Put that through, yarn over, push it through, and let the old one fall off. If you have some, you can put a stitch marker right here after the fourth one, and that will indicate where our border stitches are gonna be. So we just slip it right onto the needle, and then we continue, and then we will use this stitch marker before the last four stitches. All right, now that's not written in your pattern, but is something that you can do to make it easier on you. And now we're gonna move our yarn to the back, and we're going to knit 11. So go ahead and pause your video as needed, and we're gonna knit 11 stitches, or basically working until you have four stitches left on your needle. Okay, I have four stitches left. I'm gonna place that stitch marker and work the next stitches, which is purl, so yarn forward, purl the stitch, and purl the next stitch, and then yarn to the back, knit the next stitch, Okay, so that completes row one. And mark that on my uh, row counter, or you can uh, mark it on your, um, your paper. All right, so row two is right side. We're going to knit four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Then you're going to slip your stitch marker, okay, if you've got one, and then you're going to put the yarn forward and you'll purl 11. Pause your video as needed. You're ready to move on. Go ahead and put that yarn to the back and slip the stitch marker. And now finish out the row by knitting to the end. Before I turn my work, I'm gonna go ahead and put a stitch marker on this right side so that I know this is the front. I think it's easier to do that once you've completed that row. It's just a little bit more fabric. And we're gonna turn that over and start row three. Row three is just the same as row one. So you've got a knit two, purl two,
and then you're going to slip your stitch marker and knit all the stitches until the stitch marker and then you're going to purl two, knit two. So continue that row and I will meet you in a moment. See you soon. All right, row four, we are um, knitting two. Okay, so knit two. And then we're going to do our first specialty stitch, or I'm calling it a specialty stitch. It's in the stitch guide on your pattern. You're going to CR, which is cross right. It uses two stitches. So it will always be the ones right before the stitch marker. And then on that same row, the ones right after the stitch marker. And your border stitches are always just going to make this garter stitch look. All right. So the way that you do that, you're going to insert your needle into the second stitch, okay? And you're just going to knit it, okay? You don't let anything drop off. And then you swing your needle into the front of the first stitch and knit that. So now you have two new stitches on your needles. Now you can just let them drop off. That's all, that's, that's all you do. And then you're gonna slip your stitch marker Move your yarn to the front. Whoops, losing my stitch marker here. Move your yarn to the front and purl this row. Until we get to the ribbon section, this field, this middle area between the two stitch markers is going to be purled. So you'll know that most of the stitches are going to be purled on the right side in the middle. Pause your video as you need. After my stitch marker, I'm putting the yarn to the back because we're going to be knitting and we're working a CR. Let's do that slow this time. Here's our two stitches we're working. We're putting it into the second stitch. So we're going one, two, the second stitch. So it goes right through that way into the front. Yarn over, pull that through, and it makes a stitch onto this needle. Now we're going to go in between these two stitches, go into that first stitch, just as normal, yarn over, pull up a stitch, and then let the old ones fall off, one and two. And then move on to our next stitches, which are knit. Uh, pause your video and we will go on to row five. Be sure and catch up and we'll move on. See you in a moment. All right, row five, we're going to knit two and purl two. And then we'll slip our stitch marker. And this one changes. This is where the ribbon part uh, appears. I'll go ahead and slip that stitch marker and move our yarn to the back. And we're going to knit two. One and two. And then we're going to purl. And this puts that knit stitch on the other side for the first part of our ribbon. And then we put our yarn to the back. If you don't put your yarn to the back, you are going to create a yarn over and you're going to have too many stitches. And then you're going to um, knit until the stitch marker or knit eight. So the pattern reads knit eight. Pause your video as you need. Finish out the row, knit to the stitch marker, then purl two, knit two. I'll see you on row six. All right, row six, we're gonna knit four. And then you're just gonna reinforce the pattern that you started on that last row. Slip that stitch marker, and this is where we're going to purl eight. See, we had knitted eight on the, on the back. And then you will, um, so basically you're purling the pearls and you're knitting the knits on this inside field row. Pause your video as you need. I'm just going to get right up to it. You can see all these purl stitches that happened before. And now I am where it looks different. So you've got a purl stitch, a purl stitch, and then here's this little knit stitch right here. It looks different. You're just going to put the yarn to the back and knit that and then yarn forward and purl until the stitch marker and then knit until the end. 
uh, pause your video and I'll see you on the next row. And row seven is a knit two, purl two. So we're going to go ahead and slip this stitch marker. We're going to knit two, one, two. So we're knitting the knits and purling the purls here. So we've got this purl here, yarn forward and purl. Okay. And then this is where it changes now. We're going to add in the second part of our, um, our, our ribbon. So you can see how this part of the ribbon is a little bit longer than this part. Uh, we've worked these couple of rows. Now we're doing, we're doing this part here. So there's five stitches in between. So we've uh, purled that and we're going to knit five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then yarn forward, purl, all right, and then we're just going to finish this out, knitting two, and slip our stitch marker, and then finish the end stitches where we uh, purl two and knit two. All right, pause your video and uh, catch back up, and I will see you in a moment on row eight. All right, so row eight is going to be a cross right row. We're going to be crossing this again. I'm going to put up the directions right now so that you have them and uh, pause your video and um, just follow the directions and I'll see you back on the next row. Row nine is just like row seven. I'm gonna go ahead and um, speed this up, pause your video and continue on row nine. Row 10 just reinforces the pattern that you see here. So we're gonna knit the first four and last four and continue this pattern in the middle. Pause your video and we'll see you on row 11. Row 11 is the same as row uh, 7 and 9. Pause your video and I'll see you in a moment. Now row 12 actually makes the cross right, but it also makes a twist left and a twist right. So it is starting to take these stitches that we've had vertical and start to move them over. So we're actually going to cover all of these stitches in the stitch guide on this particular row. So your work should look like this. You've got a couple of crosses that have already happened. We're going to have our third cross that happens and then we're going to start moving this stitch over to the left and this one over to the right. Now the tip that I have for you that's not in the book, if you can think I'm twisting left and when I say left in my head, the left stitch of the two that we're going to work with, so we're working two stitches when we do one of these twisted twists, the twist left is actually going to purl the one on the left and the twist right actually purls the one on the right and that's a really easy way to keep track of well, which am I which am I twisting which am I purling all right so let's begin this uh, this pattern we're going to do the whole row together we're gonna knit two one and two let's do another cross right together work into that second second stitch pull up a stitch swing and put it into the first stitch yarn over pull through that second stitch whoops let me do that one more time put our needle through yarn over and pull it through and that's from the first stitch on your needle let them fall off slip your stitch marker if you have it and then we're going to purl two okay we're getting right up until that stitch okay so we want to take that stitch, it's still going, this stitch is still going to get knit, but you're going to purl this other one and get it to move over. And the way we do that is we take our cable needle, all right, and I just pick it up with my short end. If you have a J-hook one like this, it works really well. You just pick it up with the short end and pop it off. So we slip it on to the cable needle and hold it in the front of the work. So it just lays here, okay? And then we're going to purl from the left needle, well, and on the uh, the reverse hand, if you're we're doing the left-handed video, it's going to be on the other side. So we're going to be purling this second stitch, okay, and then push it through the back and let it fall off, and then we're going to knit the next stitch. So we put our yarn to the back, and it's moving this stitch over. We're going to slide this needle over 
and work it from the cable needle. Just knit that stitch. And now you have crossed your stitches and you've made a left twist. So it's twisting the stitches, okay? And then now we can take that cable needle away and continue by purling three. So yarn forward, purl three, one, two, three. And now we're gonna twist right. So remember we are purling the one on the right because I said this is a right-handed one. And we're gonna be knitting this, this stitch here. But this one's different. We're going to knit into the front of the second stitch like we had did, done previously on the cross right. So we're going to knit this stitch here and pull up a stitch, all right? And then we're gonna purl the first stitch. So we just put our yarn forward and then go in and purl this stitch and it actually will put them into place um, really well so you actually don't need a cable on this particular twist and push it through and get that purl stitch and now we can let both those stitches drop off and then we want to um, purl the next two stitches okay so after these twists you will continue by purling because we are in this um, right side field of purls okay this is reverse stocking net and slip that stitch marker over and we're going to do our cross right work in the first stitch work the second stitch let them fall off and then knit to the end all right pause your video and rewind if you need to and i'll meet you back on row 13. all right row 13 we are going to knit two and purl two before the stitch marker just as usual. Slip the stitch marker. And now we're going to reinforce what we just did. And if it's hard to see, just follow the directions here. We're going to knit three, one, two, three. And this comes to the pattern reading part where um, you need to know what to do when you see the parentheses. You see um, purl one and then knit three and then it says twice and those are all in parentheses. So you're actually going to purl one, okay, just like it says, and knit three, one, two, three. And then whatever was just in the parentheses, you do it a second time. So we're gonna purl one and knit three. Okay. And then we slip our stitch marker and continue finishing it out, purling two and knitting two. All right, pause your video. I'll meet you back up for the 14th row. See you in a moment. When you get to row 14, you may have already noticed the pattern within a pattern where you see every four rows gets this cross right. And so on row 14, it's very similar to row 12 in that uh, we will be twisting and moving these stitches inward again in order to um, start the first part of our twist on our ribbon here. Uh, but we won't be doing the cross right on these second stitches. So I'm going to work up until this point, we will work through a twist left and a twist right one more time, and then we will um, move on with the pattern. So I'm just gonna speed up this part, uh, pause your video as you need, and of course rewind as you need. And I'm gonna start with a knit four and a purl three and meet you there. All right, we are at the twist left. We're gonna grab our cable needle and pull off this first stitch. Okay, let it hang. And now we're going to purl on the left. Okay, and now we want to knit from the cable needle. So we're gonna slide this down to the other end. Use it just like you would a needle and knit that stitch so it moves over. Okay, now you don't need the cable needle anymore. And we're going to purl one. So there's one in between. And then we'll do our twist. This one we are knitting the second stitch. Okay, so, and we are purling our right stitch. So um, we'll put the yarn forward and purl. We're gonna move on to the next one, which is uh, purling three and finish out the row with a purl three and a knit four. 
All right, pause your video and I will see you for row 15. See you soon. All right, row 15, I'm going to put the directions down at the bottom. You are going to knit two, purl two, and then knit four, purl one, knit one, purl one, <laughs> knit four, purl two, knit two. So they'll be down at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, quickly and then we'll meet you back at 16. There's no specialty stitches here. All right, row 16, we are going to be crossing again on this row, but we also have some special information that is written in there, and this is how you would read the pattern. So I'm gonna go through the entire row with you, and this is what we are doing. We are taking uh, this section here, this this part of the ribbon, and it crosses over the uh, this part over here. So you see how it raises over that? So we've worked up to this point, and this one was purled last time. We're going to go ahead and flip those around. So you want your cable needle for that. We will be moving two stitches at a time there. And we're going to knit two and cross right first. I'm going to do these quicker since you've done this before. Pause your video as you need. Slip my stitch marker and purl four. Okay, so we are right at this first knit stitch here that needs to go. It's actually going to go underneath the uh, next two stitches here. So we are going to um, grab our cable needle and the directions say slip next two stitches onto cable needle one two okay and hold in back so we lay it to the back and let it drop so hold in the back of the work and knit so we put our yarn to the back one from this needle here the pattern actually reads left needle. You're going to be working in your um, uh, in your opposite hand here. So we're knitting that stitch, okay? And then we are going to um, purl one, knit one from the cable needle. So we're going to take our cable needle and hold it up to the back here like this. We're going to purl one. So put our yarn forward. I'm holding it kind of awkward. All right. So I've got my yarn forward. I'm going to purl it and then push it off that cable needle and then yarn to the back and we're going to knit that stitch okay so we're doing that from the cable needle and then the, the directions say purl four so you're purling to the end of that stitch marker and then you're going to cross right and knit two so just how you've done before when you finish out the row that has the cross right Work that second stitch. Make sure it goes through there. There we go. Work that first stitch. Okay. And then knit two. And this is what your knitting should look. This is how it should look before you move on. You see how it's overlapping? All right, you're ready to move on. I'll see you on row 17. And row 17, we'll put the directions down at the bottom, but they're um, fairly simple. Everything that you've done before, I'll work through it right now very quickly. So row 18, I'm going to knit four. And purl three. Again, pause your video as needed. All right, and this is where our directions change. So don't start doing a twist left first and then a twist right because that's going to be wrong. We're, we're Now we're working the opposite direction. So you actually need to read the pattern where it says twist right. So the twist right again is you knit into the front of the second stitch, put your yarn to the back, knit into the front and yarn forward and purl that first stitch push it through let those two fall off and now we need to purl the next stitch 
We're going to widen that space again. So we've got the purl one in the middle now. Okay. And then we're going to twist left, which is slipping onto the cable needle, holding in the front. Okay. And then we're going to purl. And then knit from the cable needle. Get that yarn up to the front and knit. All right, so now you have successfully moved it and created a gap again. See that gap? Okay, and then now you will uh, purl to the end of your stitch marker. And then knit the last four stitches. All right, pause your video and I'll meet you back on row 19. See you soon. Row 19 is just like a row 13 where we had some directions in parentheses. So I'll put the directions at the bottom of the screen and we'll continue on. Ready for row 20 and it's very similar to row 18. It's just that some of the instructions are um, shortened for pearls. Uh, you're going to be widening this gap. So instead of purling in the middle once, you're going to be purling in the middle three times here. So I'll put the directions at the screen and we'll speed it up and I'll meet you at the end for row 21. Pause your video as needed. It's row 20 and you can see how it's starting to splay out here. And then we're going to start reinforcing, reinforcing this length here. So this is what it looks like. So you've now completed this sort of X portion and we're now just going to make this longer and then we will go back in again and finish this off. So I'll put the directions on the screen as we go and you'll be able to uh, kind of plow through this section here. Just pause your video and then go on to the next segment as you need. All right, I'll see you. Row 21, row 22, row 23, row 24, Row 25, we are row 26 and you can see how our top of our uh, ribbon has gotten, um, well it's elongated, it's not actually wider so it's uh, we've gotten a longer tall, taller part of the ribbon. So uh, we are going to do a uh, row here where we knit four, purl two, and then we are going to do a twist left. So you've already done this one before. We're just going to uh, do it again, but the left is going to be first. So I'll go ahead and have the directions down at the bottom of the screen so you can see that. Again, pause your video.
All right, so we are on row 27 and we are on the um, wrong side here. And we are going to start reducing and increasing stitches in the same row. So your total count will remain 19, but we are going to knit three together right in the middle to create that point. So it's going to create this point here. And then we also need to make some stitches, all right, because we are decreasing. So uh, the way that we do that is we will um, work the first stitches together as usual. We're knitting two, we're purling two. Slip your stitch marker, knit three, and then we're gonna make one. So one, two, and three, okay. And now we're going to make a stitch. Now, the uh, difference in the book and in this pattern here is because we've had a twisted stitch here. So in the book, it shows it very easily that there is a, um, a ladder between. Let me back up one stitch and I'll show you. So you see this stitch here, this ladder that's in between. Normally when you make one, you go into that stitch here and then we grab the back of that stitch or that strand and then we knit it and it knits through the back loop and then we've created a stitch okay but in this case um, let me go back to knitting this stitch in this case because there was a twisted stitch before it's kind of hard to see but you'll notice that there is an extra strand right here in front this one so we're just going to place that onto our uh, needle okay I've just picked it up and then we're going to knit into the back of that. Go right back here. And we're going to knit that stitch. So you get a new stitch over here. And then let that one drop off. Okay, so we've created one out of thin air. <laughs> All right. And then we move on to the next uh, instruction, which is purl one. So put our yarn forward and purl this next stitch. Okay, and now we're going to decrease two stitches. So we're going to make up for the one that we increased and then we'll still have an extra one um, that we need to um, uh, get back on here because we're gonna change our stitch count. So we uh, are gonna put our yarn to the back and we're going to knit this stitch. It will look like a purl on the right side. So we're going to knit three stitches together. We're grabbing this first one, second and third and we're going through the front leg of all three at the same time. So work your needle there. You can do just the, the tips if it's a little bit too tight. Yarn over and pull it through. Kind of guide your uh, needle all the way through up and under, grabbing all three and let them slide off. Okay, so that is knitting three together and then we purl one. And then this is where we're going to make one because we are down to 18 stitches and we need to get back to 19. Okay, so we're gonna grab this stitch here, right here, put the yarn in the back and knit into the back of that stitch, okay? There we go. So I'm gonna go here and knit that stitch and then we're going to work the rest of our row which is um, knit three, one, two, and three, and slip that stitch marker. And the same as we've done before, purl two, knit two. I turn it over and look at this. So now you can see that it is starting to curve right here. And then when we do this next row, it's going to uh, reinforce that. So we're actually going to do some crossing and moving um, a little bit more in row 28. So let's dive right into row 28. We're going to knit two. Now it spells out everything we're going to be doing. So we're going to knit two and cross right. All right. Slip the stitch marker. Okay, purl four. Again, pause your video. This this um, section you definitely will need to be using that pause. 
Okay, so we're knitting, or I'm sorry, we're working all the way up until uh, where this knit stitch is, it's being crossed around, okay? And then now we want to slip the next two stitches onto the cable needle. I'll grab my cable needle, one, two, and then our directions to say, hold it in the back of the work. So we're gonna flip it back here and let it just hang. That's what I like about these J-hook cable needles. All right, and we're gonna purl. This is the very next stitch, purl. All right, and now we need to purl two from the cable needle. So we're gonna hold this up. Here we go. Get my hands adjusted so that it fits in there nicely. And we want to make sure our yarn is forward, which it is because we just purled that. And go ahead and purl one from the cable needle and purl the second one from the cable needle. All right, drop the cable needle. And then we are going to continue by purling four. One, two, whoops, that's two. Three and four, and then slip that and finish out the row with your cross. And knit two. Okay, so you can see that it has. Um, made our little ribbon there. Look at that. You did it. <laughs> you made your ribbon. Uh, let's move on with the uh, directions to continue. So rows 29 through 32, uh, is, which is the next four rows, you're going to repeat the first four rows of the pattern. So you're actually going to repeat um, where we uh, just knit to purl to, and then we um, knit along the uh, reverse here. So we knit, so we had started becoming a field of uh, purls. So you get this kind of uh, empty section right here. Okay, so what this does is we finished, and now it puts this little section here. And then once you've completed that, this is where we look to our directions that we went over the first time. It says the cozy needs to be smaller than the mug. Okay. So smaller than the mug and so uh, that it fits and so you can measure around your mug okay so I'm measuring around my mug and I want it maybe to go up to the top pay no attention to the logo you see <laughs> uh, so I've got uh, nine uh, nine and three quarters uh, or maybe even nine and a half all right so that's what my diameter of my mug is and um, so we want to measure the length of our cozy and multiply it by two. Okay, so my cozy is four and a quarter. So doubling that, it would be, well, let's see, yeah. Uh, it's almost four and a half. So doubling that uh, would make it to nine. And uh, I haven't gotten my extra little section in here. So um, when I measure this one, you'll see that um, when I make the next repeat, it actually is the right size. So let's measure this one out. So I got, I got nine and a quarter on my final results. And I did not repeat these first four rows. Okay, so um, I say repeat the first four rows. Let me finish my directions. So, okay, so we've got rows 29 through 32. We're going to repeat the rows one through four. Okay, so that's it. So after we've done our thing, we're going to make this little section here. This is the area where we're measuring the length of our cozy. Multiply it by two. If it needs to be longer, you're going to repeat those rows one more time. I'm not doing that on mine to make it to match this mug here. Okay. And then if not, then you continue on the remaining rows. So what you're going to do is do rows 33 through 59. You're going to repeat rows 5 through 31. So we're come over here. You've already done 1 through 4 again. Now you're just going to start 5, and you're going to repeat all the way down until row uh, 31. You go down to here, and 31 would be repeating rows one through four, so you're actually repeating one through three, and you end here 
and you end at the end of a wrong side row. Okay, and then we're going to bind off all stitches in pattern, leaving a long end for sewing. So that's what I'm going to skip to now. I've already gotten my sample ready, and I'm going to show you how to bind off all stitches in pattern. So if you haven't done that, we're going to do that together, and we're going to sew it up. We'll sew it up. All right, see you in a moment. Be sure and pause your video. Work the next um, repeats, rows 1 through 31, basically, and we'll see you when you get ready to bind off. All right, so we want to bind off in pattern, and what that means is whatever your next pattern would be to continue this look. <laughs> so um, that's not like the official definition, but that's basically that's what you're doing. So um, I have two purl stitches on these stitches here, but normally I would be knitting them. So I'm going to continue knitting these two stitches. So knit one and knit two. And before I move on, I'm going to bind off. So I just lift the first stitch up and over the second stitch, just as normal. Okay, and then the next two stitches I would also knit. So I'm going to knit just the next one and then bind off up and over. Okay, and the next one I would knit as well. So we knit that and lift up and over. Okay, this is where we come to the middle section of the field where it has all that reverse stocking net in pearls. So all of these you're going to purl and then the last four you're going to do how you did the first four so now we're going to be purling so we're just going to um, purl the next stitch place our yarn in front and purl and then we lift up and over to bind off if it's easier for you to put the working yarn in the back uh, to do that then go ahead and do that and I'll show you what I mean here in a second so when I lift up and uh, over, if, if you need the yarn in the back to uh, have stability and hold on, then do that. I do that sometimes. Oops. Let's see. I did that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now I've uh, bound that stitch off. Make sure and put our yarn forward. And we're going to purl. Okay. And bind that off. And continue all the way across until you come to your last stitch. Pause your video as needed. And then now we want to um, pull this yarn through and I've cut a length of yarn that I've already cut this off. So it's about um, three times the width of here just so that uh, of my project so that I know that I have plenty to sew with. All right, so we're gonna pull that too. And now we're going to sew these uh, two ends together. Grab your, um, grab your tapestry needle and scissors and I'll meet you in a moment. All right, so I'm going to stitch these two ends together and this little short tail from the cast on, uh, let's go ahead and weave that tail in first to get it out of the way. It'll make it less confusing when we're sewing in. Uh, so I want to work it to the back here. And we'll just go ahead and work um, All the way down here. I'm going to go into my border here. And as you can see, I'm just following this pattern along. Can weave yours in a little bit more. I'm not going to worry about it on this particular project. Okay, so I've got that tail in there. It's going to be less confusing to see less tails. So we're going to put these two together, uh, make sure that we're uh, got the right side facing out, and we're going to be working with this long tail here. And um, we're going to be putting that through our wide-eyed tapestry needle. We want to attach them so you're going to go alongside where these uh, V stitches are right here on the end and we're going to go in that very first stitch and we're going to go through it uh, twice to lock it in. Okay. 
And actually, I think I'm good. I think I'm just going to come on this other side. Okay. So we went back to the other side where it originally came out of. All right, so I'm going to weave back and forth between these uh, edges here and it, it will sew it up. Now we're going to be going underneath the V stitches that go this way, the knit stitches, and they're facing this direction, not the ones that are on the ends making that chain edge. So just pick anywhere here. I'm just going to look at what these look like. I'm pulling them back so you can see it. So when I go in between where these pearl bumps are, you can see that there's a leg of the stitches. You can see two of them in a V shape right here. See these? Okay. So we're going to be going underneath those uh, and all the way through. And then we go onto the other side and we do the same thing. We're going to go onto this side. All right, so we're gonna go straight onto the other side, this little column here. Okay, this is before where all of the uh, stitches are um, for the uh, cross stitches. So we're gonna go up there. We're gonna go back over onto this side where this column is, below where the purl stitch is, and pick up the two edges of the V underneath. And then we'll now go over here, and these are really easy to see because you can see this little V stitch, the, the knit stitch from that column, and go over to the other side, and go to this first column over here, and then go to the opposite side, pick up those stitches, and over here, and pick up those. And now you've got these columns all nicely put together. And now we need to go in between where the pearl bumps are. And they're not as easy to see. So we're going to go down in between, not these edges here, but in between the row and the edge. And you've got this pearl bump. Go right underneath where the pearl bump is and you will see the little V that's underneath there for the knit stitch. Go to the other side, and you see the pearl bump. Go right below it, right between those stitches, and pull up, and it connects. So you see your knitting is already connecting up nicely, and just continue going back and forth until you get to the other end, and I'll meet you back up to weave in the ends. See you soon. All right, so I'm through to the other side, and I'm just going to go up here. And around and then go up through again and create that stitch there okay so now I'm just gonna kind of go through and weave my tail back in all right so I have a nice finished edge nice and seamed together look at that then we're just going to slip it on top of our mug here from my peppermint mocha. <laughs> so, and we have our nice little mug cozy. I hope that you have enjoyed this pattern, learning how to read a pattern and also make your ribbon mug cozy. Thank you so much to Leisure Arts for providing the pattern and the books. Be sure and catch my review and a little giveaway of a book or two. And we'll see you next time here on Good Knit Kisses. Subscribe if you haven't and like that video. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.